In this video, I'm going to show you some of the features related to Revit's materials and how they can be leveraged for use in Enscape. So if we go to Manage, Material Dialog, we are first presented with all the materials that are in the current project. We also have access to the Autodesk provided material library. In the upper left, we can search both of those at the same time. So for example, if I type fence, you'll notice that there is no material called fence within either the local library or the installed shared library. So I'll click the X to clear that. And then I'm going to quickly make a new material called fence. And then we'll notice the appearance asset is just this gray color. And I'm going to click the replace this asset, not the duplicate one. Place this asset. And then this is searching the asset library, not the material library. An asset, specifically an appearance asset in our case, is a subset of a Revit material. So here I'm going to search for the word fence. And you'll see that I actually do get some options. So there's three options here that are not part of a regular Revit material. So if I were looking for a chain link fence, for example, I could select this and double click on it. Or when I'm hovering over it, I can click this little icon and it pushes the appearance asset into this Revit material. So this Revit material that I just created that really doesn't have any good identity data or graphics data yet now has a good appearance asset. And here we can see it has a texture applied, it has a cutout applied, and it has a bump applied. So the black areas in the cutout are going to make a transparent area. And then this texture is giving us the material. So if I click on this uh, texture thumbnail, I get this thing called the texture editor. Notice the size is four and three quarters by four. Kind of odd that it's not square, but uh, for whatever reason, but that's the size that it will be created in the real world in Revit and then ultimately in Enscape. So this can be scaled up or down. And you'll want to make sure that the cutout and the bump all have the same size as well. Now right below the previews are the, is the name of the path and the file. So you can see all of the Revit textures are stored in program files, common files. So that folder common files is a Windows thing. And then in common files is Autodesk shared. And then it all gets all the way down to the JPEG. So I'm going to click on this word and it's going to open the file browser dialog here. And again, you can see the path to this file that we're currently looking at and have selected. Notice this number two folder. We're going to come back to that in just a minute. But once we get to this location, we can see the image file that we've selected. And usually right next to it is a, the cutout and the bump. You can see that in the file name. Those are the files that are being used for those other two settings. Interestingly enough, in this dialog box, we can do something kind of cool, like search for the word fence and hit enter. And it shows me several fence options. Now these are uh, some additional textures that we can use. Another thing in a different context you might do here is search for carpet. And there's a whole bunch of carpet options. Also, while you're here, you can switch to thumbnail mode. And then if you hold down the control key and spin your wheel, you can make those previews larger. So this is a really great way, whether you're looking at the Autodesk materials or you have a stash of, of textures in your company or on your some sort of shared drive, you can quickly get a look at the actual texture and, and what you want to use. So I'm just going to hit cancel because I'm happy with this. Also notice the preview at the top 
can be resized and there's even a little drop down here that allows you to change the scene so I can actually make this a glass curtain wall in our case that's actually kind of what this would end up looking like and then there's this little information section if you wanted to change the name of this appearance asset which is not super relevant but it can be managed here if you had multiple options maybe there's a version of this that was rotated 45 degrees for some reason but now that we've had a look at the available materials both in the project and in the material library and then the appearance asset library which we just pulled something in from to this material I can hit OK and then I could use that material in Revit and then in Enscape we'll come back to that in just a second and so what we're going to look at now is that folder path that we were just talking about. So program files, not Autodesk, but common files, and then Autodesk shared. And then there's this folder called materials, and then textures. And then this is really interesting. There's folders named one, two, and three. And the number one folder has the lowest quality images. So if we were to come in here and right click and turn on dimensions, for example, we can see these are only 256 uh, by 256, super low quality. If we go into the number two folder, And then also turn on dimensions. We can see these are 512 by 512. Also really low quality. These are half of HD. And then finally, if we go into the three folder, which is the folder you should be using, that asset for the chain link fence is actually coming from folder two, which is really low quality. Notice this folder is sorting by size. So a 14 megabyte texture is really quite large, uh, un unnecessarily large. But you can see when I hover over this particular one, it's 4096 by 4096. So these are 4K textures. These are what Revit's new advanced materials use, which we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. You can see there's quite a few of them in here. Uh, this number three folder is a little bit unusual though because there are different sizes um, 6,000 by 3,600 and then you go all the way down and and there are some smaller ones so most of them are HD all the way up to 4k and then in this folder you can also search for things like carpet and then look at the materials so now we're going to go back into Revit and have one more look at the material browser and then we'll try using that chain link fence. So you'll notice that every little preview here, and by the way, this is a, the default template that's installed with Revit. All of these materials have this little orange triangle in the lower left, which means it's a legacy material. That doesn't necessarily mean it's bad, and it, and it, these materials work just fine in Enscape. In fact, in Enscape's material editor within Revit, Enscape only supports legacy materials. It doesn't support the advanced material I'm about to show you. The advanced materials do work in Enscape. They just don't work in Enscape's material editor. So anyways, there's lots of options here, and if I were to search for wood, for example, you see all of these are just simple textures. The, if I click on this little preview and hover over the file, you see it's only 256 by 256. So that's a really low quality texture. Now down below here in the material library, the shared library installed with Revit, we can see that there are some textures that don't have the little orange triangle. And if I one of those into my project, and I'll click keep both, so 
we have a legacy one and back on the legacy one for a minute notice that this one this one actually is somewhere in between the really old original textures where this would say generic let's see if i can find one of those real quick yeah like this one says generic and then you just manually set all the things and then this other legacy texture, it's still uh, meant to be a physically accurate material. It's giving you properties related specifically to wood in this case. There's some other ones like ceramic and glass that you'll see the word here. But then these newer advanced materials, um, they sort of go backwards slightly in the fact that the other intermediate one had the word wood, which is pretty helpful. Um, this one is what's called a PBR material. It's similar to what the, all the gaming engines and games use for materials. Um, so it says parameter. There's an image. If we click on this, we'll see that this is a 2700 by 5400. So it's a pretty high quality texture. And then it also has a roughness map. So this is different than what we've seen before. Previously, we saw cutout and bump. This also has a bump map, and you can see each one of these look quite different. They're doing something different, and then there's some advanced highlight controls. So this material is now loaded into the project and can be used in a Revit item, and then it'll show up as a really nice texture in Enscape. One of the reasons that it's preferable to use these higher quality textures especially if you have a good computer with a good graphics card, is that Enscape always downsamples every texture it touches when it loads it into the real-time rendering environment to optimize the real-time rendering experience. So a 4K texture might get bumped down to a 2K and a 2K down to HD and HD down to 512. Um, so you really don't want to start out with 512 or 256K and have that further reduced by Enscape. Um, it's just what it does, so that's something you have to keep in mind. If you ever look at the Enscape journal file, you'll notice that is something that's happening. So one last thing then, I'm going to apply that chain link texture to this generic wall. So I'm going to open up the material library. It defaults to the last thing I worked with, so I'm going to click on one of these and then type the letter F to jump down to that section. And then with that selected, I'm going to hit OK. And then just to ground this, I'm going to throw in a floor. And then I'm going to set a material for this floor. And in fact, I'm going to load a really nice advanced material called Oak Flooring Espresso. This looks really great in Enscape. Now, one thing that's interesting and I want to point out about the chain link fence material is that if you apply it to a material with a thickness and this cutout is applied, which it is for a chain link fence, um, if your material thickness is too thick, like this wall will be, you'll actually see two chain link fences because of the spacing. The material is actually being applied to both sides. So you get this sort of weird like Gabian wall kind of thing. So the way you'd fix this is by applying it to a material that has virtually no thickness. You want to make it as thin as possible, and then it'll look fine. And then you can see this floor material looks quite nice. And because it's a more physically accurate material, depending on the angle in which you're looking at the material, it'll change the the sheen and the surface properties. It's really quite a nice material. You'll see this for the orange peel paint advanced material as well. If you look at it from a, a slight angle, you can see the, the 
ripples in the paint uh, as the light interacts with it. It's pretty cool. So this is a quick look at some of the materials and how they work in Revit to the benefit of creating great visualizations in Enscape.